The final quarter of 1958 produced significant achievements in testing. First, full-range flight. Placement of an atlas in orbit. And successful ground tests of refined structures and systems. Six missiles were delivered to static, flight, and operational sites. The result of increased activity in the manufacturing area. In this quarter, two operational sites under construction were well underway, and design was in progress on five additional Atlas bases. The test effort on B, C, and D series missiles, now in various stages of development, will be described by Wally Withy, Assistant Chief Engineer for Test. The successful completion of the A-series test program has brought us to the second step in ATLAS development, the B-series missile. Testing the MA-1 full cluster engine and associated missile control systems for this series neared completion during this quarter. The last static missile in the series was 7B, assigned to the missile static test site, Edwards Air Force Base. At stand 1-1, the final static firing for the B-Series program was conducted October 17th. This was the longest static firing of this series, a 271-second run. All primary objectives in support of the B-Flight program were satisfied. Missile 7B and stand 1-1 are now undergoing modification in preparation for a series of bending mode tests. A simulated 6,400-pound upper stage payload will be secured to the Atlas airframe. Vibration tests will determine dynamic center of gravity and other factors involved in control of a two-and-one-half stage missile. The flight test program for the B-Series was continued at the Atlantic Missile Range, Cape Canaveral, Florida. Preparation for these tests early in the quarter included modifications to existing missiles, a result of information obtained on the first five B-series flights. These changes were to the booster turbopump, which was the indicated cause of failure on the flight of 6B. 9B was the first missile flight tested this quarter. It was successfully launched at 8 p.m. on November 17th. At liftoff, a roll error occurred corrected later by Guidance Command. The autopilot carried out the pitch-over command, bringing missile attitude to the desired trajectory angle. Data obtained during flight indicated a fuel-rich mixture to the booster engine, resulting in premature depletion of fuel. Except for this, all flight systems functioned well. The planned range for 9B was 3,150 nautical miles. Booster separation occurred 131 seconds after launch. Sustainer cutoff was at 227 seconds. Nose cone separation was not accomplished. Actual impact of 9B was 2,300 miles downrange. The second flight test of the quarter occurred 11 days later. This was missile 12B, launched from Complex 14 at 9.27 p.m. on November 28th. The telemetry system for this flight included 105 measurements, out of which 99 yielded usable quantitative data. Clean signals were received for more than 300 seconds. Planned range was 5,500 nautical miles. This first full-range Atlas flight was achieved six months earlier than had been predicted in 1954. On December 18, 1958, Missile 10B was ready for an apparently normal launch operation. Few people knew the true nature of the flight objective. Final preparation included installation and checkout of a special signal core package to be used as a station for relaying voice and telegraph messages between two ground stations and the missile in orbit. Because of this device, the missile was dubbed the talking satellite. Countdown to T minus zero was excellent, with only two minutes of hold time for last minute adjustment. 
10B was launched at 6.02 p.m. December 18, 1958, a year and a day after the first fully successful Atlas flight. All systems performed satisfactorily from liftoff to cutoff. Time of powered flight was 288 seconds. 10B went into an orbit with perigee at 98 nautical miles. Apogee at 795 miles. The C-Series Atlas is a further refinement of missile design, notably in the area of weight reduction. This design has progressed in its normal development to the point where captive testing is nearing completion. First hot runs were made at Sycamore Canyon Band 1. This is missile 2C dynamically similar in construction to the planned operational atlas. It is one of nine static and flight missiles which will demonstrate design integrity of the thin gauge stainless steel propellant tanks and test the performance of advanced systems. November 12th, Sycamore Stand 1. First C-Series full thrust firing. Result, all objectives satisfactorily met. This firing paved the way for longer duration runs with more advanced and detailed test objectives. On December 1st, a second firing was accomplished with 2C. This successful 73-second firing featured booster engine staging and gimballing. On December 12th, a 91-second firing was conducted. Last run of the quarter was a 287-second run on December 24th. Good data were obtained during these test firings in support of reliability evaluation and continued development of missile systems. The backup missile to the C-Series flight test program is 6C at Stand 1A, Edwards Missile Static Test Site. 6C was erected November 8th, shortly after its delivery to the site. During missile detanking operations on December 11th, the intermediate bulkhead separating liquid oxygen from fuel was damaged. Failure of the fuel pre-valve during this operation was the determined cause. To reinstate the 6C test program, necessary replacement items are being obtained from missile 10C. The C-series program included plans for an early flight test to verify integrity of the advanced design and pinpoint possible problem areas. 3C was the first of the advanced design missiles to be launched. For this series, fiberglass pod covers have been replaced with aluminum covers. Booster staging is accomplished by pneumatic rather than explosive fittings. And the Mod 3 guidance system has replaced Mod 2 equipment. Guidance is closed loop. That is, output signals are fed directly to the autopilot system. Liftoff was from Complex 12 at 11.45 p.m. on December 23rd. Booster engine runtime for this flight was increased. The booster section jettisoned 149 seconds after launch. Sustainer engine shutoff was at 243 seconds, after which final vectoring was accomplished with verniers. The nose cone separated at 280 seconds, and the missile body was backed off by its retro rocket. Planned range was 3,800 nautical miles. The guidance system computer at Cape Canaveral indicated an impact point one half mile from the target. The D missile is the fourth major step in Atlas development. This series incorporates the latest design improvements and is the first missile slated for initial operational capability. A test program to evaluate the propulsion system was initiated at Edwards Missile Static Test Site. On November 26, an Atlas thrust section containing the North American MA-2 boosters was mated to the battleship tank at Stand 1-4. Metal booster fairings, shown being installed, are substituted for lighter fiberglass fairings to be used on flight missiles. The MA-2 power package 
combining boosters, sustainer, and verniers, produces 368,000 pounds of thrust, some 6,000 more than the MA-1 propulsion system. A major change has been made to the pneumatic system and involves the use of individually shrouded titanium spheres mounted in the thrust section. The helium stored in these bottles is used for missile tank pressurization and booster engine controls. At stand 1-95 this quarter, high-rate propellant loading tests were begun. Battleship tanks simulating missile tank capacities were used. Phase 1 tests were completed, proving the capability of the A.D. Little loading system to meet operational requirements. Flow rates attained were 4,300 gallons of fuel and 5,900 gallons of liquid oxygen per minute. Phase two tests continue in refining methods for charging the pressurization system. Phase three tests will utilize a production tank for more comprehensive evaluation and development. This static and flight test program continues to advance the reliability and performance of the Atlas Intercontinental Ballistic Missile. At the Kearney Mesa plant, Missile fabrication and assembly has been stepped up to meet planned operational objectives. Progress will be described by Bill Young, manager of operations. The scheduled increase in production activity is apparent in both areas of Building 5. In the Low Bay area, large items of equipment have been installed to manufacture missile parts that previously had to be made elsewhere. Many smaller machines have put into operation, finishing missile parts installed on D-missiles. One such part is the forged bracket that supports helium bottles on the D-series apex structure, shown being finished by these precision tools. Missile tank fabrication and other major assembly manufacturing is carried on here in the adjacent High Bay area of Building 5. Established assembly line techniques permit a smooth flow in tank construction from raw stock to the finished muscle tank. Sheet steel sections ranging in thicknesses from 12 to 37 thousandths are used in the construction of D-series missile tanks. These are tank sections being spot welded in series of two. While this operation is going on, workers assemble the forward bulkhead, the intermediate bulkhead, which separates fuel from locks, and the aft bulkhead, or apex structure. All tank sections and bulkheads are assembled in the major fixture. All seams are spot welded and baffles are installed inside the tanks. During this quarter, nine D missile airframes were completed. Below us, missiles 11, 12, and 13 are nearing completion. This is 10 D being placed in the dock midway in the quarter. Step up in production is evident in this view of Atlas missiles in various stages of final assembly. The completed missile is moved to the final checkout docks nearby. Here, the missile's many systems undergo integrated tests. These composite tests ensure that all mechanical and electrical systems are functioning correctly. The last missile to receive final checkout during this quarter was missile 1D. This missile was readied for shipment to Vandenberg Air Force Base and left the plant on December 15th. Release of 1D was a milestone event in the development of Atlas as a military weapon system. Progress in operational development 
will be presented by Ed Reynolds, manager of product support. The training program for Air Force personnel was developed for the purpose of providing these individuals with the knowledge and skills required to effectively utilize and maintain the 107A1 weapon system. To meet these objectives, the training program is divided into two major phases of instruction, Type 1 training in San Diego and integrated weapon system training at Vandenberg Air Force Base. Type 1 training has begun here in San Diego and consists of classroom and laboratory instruction of Air Force specialists to qualify them in the respective areas of responsibility. Fifteen separate courses of instruction are programmed in Type 1 training, ranging from basic familiarization to highly technical schooling in ballistic missile technology. Until such time as sufficient training hardware is available here at Bernard School, laboratory instruction in the missile systems and ground support equipment will be supplemented by on-job training within the factory area. At the end of 1958, 225 Air Force officers and enlisted men have graduated from the supervisors and planners course. An additional 141 trainees currently are attending specialized technical courses. Actual experience in missile handling and maintenance began with the delivery of the first pre-operational atlas. One D left San Diego December 15th and arrived the same evening. The missile will be housed at the squadron maintenance area for inspection prior to erection at Launcher A of Complex 65-1. By the end of December, mechanical tasks were complete on all of the complex 65-1 launchers and detailed installations were in progress. At the blockhouse, RCA engineers were installing control equipment during the report period. Validation of the launcher A equipment began in late December and will be finished in January. Complex 65-1 will be used for phase two training to attain operational capability by the 1st of July, 1959. The second launch complex, 65-2, is under construction. Launchers at this site maintain their respective missiles in the horizontal readiness condition. 65-2 will be complete in October, 1959, and used for Air Force integrated weapon system training on a continuing basis. The second and third operational squadrons will be located at Warren Air Force Base in Cheyenne. During this quarter, activity at the main base centered around the squadron maintenance area. These buildings will be removed to make way for the missile maintenance and checkout buildings. Meanwhile, construction continued at Site A, northwest of the main base, and Site B, 30 miles northeast. Site A is being developed rapidly. Construction is 26% complete, and progress is about even on all six launchers. Design will soon be finalized for construction of five other operational bases. These will be located at Omaha, Nebraska, Spokane, Washington, Topeka, Kansas, Lincoln, Nebraska, and Salina, Kansas. These are the first steps in operational development of a new weapon system and are paralleling the continuous progress in Atlas design improvement. The overall picture at the end of 1958 can be shown by a review of major achievements during the year. A summary of highlights for the 12-month period will be given by Mort Rosenbaum, Chief Engineer for Convair Astronautics. 1958 was a year of significant achievement in both the program development of the weapon system itself and in the attainment of knowledge which has advanced the state of the art in missile research. In the first month of 1958, the fourth Atlas flight missile was launched from Cape Canaveral. This was one of the A-series missiles, which was built to demonstrate many of the basic systems in a logical approach to the complete missile configuration. A big step forward was made with the start of the B-series flight test in July. These more advanced missiles were assigned the task of proving out operation of the full engine cluster, with booster staging, command guidance from ground station, nose cone separation, 
and solo flight of the re-entry cone to the target. From July to the end of the year, there were eight B-series flights with effective increases in the scope of each test, leading to the first full-range flight, followed by the orbital flight on December 18th. The 13 flight tests during this year can be compared to the visible portion of an iceberg. The base represents a broad base of research, development, and tests required to support this effort. This development program has brought us to a point where successful operational employment is assured. At the present time, our engineering groups are devoting most of their effort to the operational missile. This effort has been underway for some time. Continuous attention to weight reduction has resulted in improved missile performance. The E-series operational missiles will be able to deliver a 1,600-pound bomb over 8,000 nautical miles, permitting the striking of all enemy targets from southern United States launch points, such as Fort Worth, Texas. In addition, the E-series will carry an all-inertial guidance system. This equipment makes the missile independent of ground systems, reducing complexity and eliminating any possibility of jamming. Much attention has also been given to maintainability of the operational missile. Many critical parts are being relocated to an area outboard of the booster chamber where access is obtained by removing the thrust fairing. The Atlas, of course, makes an effective booster for space vehicles. It will be used in this manner in the 117L program to boost the Lockheed Reconnaissance Satellite and as a booster for the manned space capsules of the NASA. Many of the ideas now on the drawing boards will materialize in the year ahead, in which continued development will parallel production and delivery of initial operational missiles to the Strategic Air Command. <laughs>